Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you are in the prog corner. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm flying no notes. You don't see no four by six cards in my hand today. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do something a little autobiographical. Last year, I did a couple of these episodes. One was called uh, How Prog Rock Ruined My Life, and then that was followed up with uh, How Prog Rock Saved My Life. Well, today, I'm going to be talking about you know, what I've done my whole life with music and uh, what got me to this point right here. Well, boys and girls, my dad was a musician, so I grew up uh, in a very musical house with a lot of jazz playing, but he was also into Zappa and the Beatles and the Moody Blues, so we had a lot of great records growing up. And I remember when I was five years old, my dad gave me a choice. Son, you're going to play guitar, you're going to play piano pick one. And even at five years old, I knew that the guitar players got the chicks. So yeah, guitar it was. My dad used to do stuff like put stuff on the strings to make sure that I would practice every day. And I did. I, I practiced every single day. A couple years later, family decides we're going to start a, a family band uh, like the Partridge family of Milwaukee. We were called the Kool-Aids. You know, we played uh, Holiday Inns and, you know, we played the Wisconsin State Fair. It's pretty sad when you're playing in front of 100,000 people when you're seven years old. And, and you know, even back then, it's going to be all downhill from there. Yeah, I remember that gig pretty well. Uh, there was a bee that kept bothering me. And uh, I, I do not like bees at all. Wasps and bees are my nemesis. So here I am, a little kid, freaking out on stage, running around. And of course, nobody saw the bee. They just saw a little kid freaking out. So, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, then throughout the 70s, Obviously, I kept playing guitar, and uh, at some point, my dad decides he wants to retire and buy a sailboat, so we moved on to a boat, sailed the Caribbean. I, of course, took my classical guitar with me, and I was practicing like eight, nine hours a day, every day. There was nothing else to do on the boat, man. So finally, when we get back to civilization, uh, the first thing I do is I go to an Ace Music in Miami and I buy me a Marshall Stack, you know, and uh, uh, I borrowed a Gibson SG from my dad and I decided I wanted to be in a band, but, uh, you know, I was in a couple little little bands through the 80s that didn't do anything. 1983, I joined a band called Disorderly Conduct and uh, with the great lead singer Casey Chaos and we actually released an album back in 86. Here it is, Disorderly Conducts, ah man. Yeah, there I am, you see me? Yeah, that's the back. There's your boy right there. Yeah, how do you like them apples? Uh, Casey Chaos, the singer for the band, uh, he moved the band out to LA. I stayed in Florida. They changed the name to ah man, and he got signed. Uh, Three albums by Amen, all three of them were on three different labels. One was on Roadrunner, one was on Virgin, and I think the other was on uh, uh, Surge's uh, imprint from uh, System of a Down. Anyway, there was some debate about who wrote that BYOB song. Was it Surge or was it Casey Chaos? I guess they settled out of court. We also put out a cassette on it. <laughs> Pretty cool relic from the past. But uh, yeah, so that band uh, moved to California, morphed into something else, and I stayed in Florida. And uh, you know, at that point, things started getting pretty bad for me. I was working a whole bunch, and I was really not doing a whole lot musically, working for Foot Locker like 80, 90, 100 hours a week. It was ridiculous. So at some point, I decided, you know, this is just not working for me. So I got another job where I was working less, and uh, started another band and uh, that one was uh, called Wedge Piece and we put out uh, one CD this is called Absolute Bliss very cool Digipack yeah Wedge Piece was just me and uh, this guy Mark Marinelli who was married to my niece uh, Dude Man couldn't play at all, so it actually helped me a great deal with my songwriting. I had to learn how to uh, write real, real simple songs, because uh, this guy 
you know, just couldn't keep up, and it made me a much, much better songwriter. Uh, we put out a second album that's on digital only uh, called uh, Exit Lamore, which I really, really like too. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to hear that. But uh, I am doing a giveaway today on the Wedge Piece CD. Uh, the first three people that ask for a copy are going to get a copy. Yeah, it even folds out. It's actually a pretty good digipack. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've got a few of these left over. We sold, like, about 800 of them, so I got maybe, like, 200 of them left. I think we pressed, like, 1,000. But uh, that was a fun band. It was all, like, acoustic indie stuff. I used to call it uh, folk punk because I was just so angry all the time, screaming and yelling. But uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a, we had a good time doing it. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I met a girl in Ohio. <laughs> and... Uh, we were talking on MySpace for like three years and uh, decided at some point that uh, I needed to move to Ohio since I guess she didn't want to move to Florida. It was just a little too hot for her, an Ohio girl. You know, she wasn't down with that. So I moved up here to Ohio and for all intents and purposes, my music career was done, over, I was done with it. Yeah, I was up here a couple years, and I started writing for a webzine called the the Fire Note, and that helped to uh, you know give me a little outlet and a little creative outlet for me to do something. Uh, and then, as everybody knows the story, a few years after that, my editor at the Fire Note decided to you know. This prog stuff is doing really great. Maybe we should uh, really focus on it. Maybe you should start a YouTube channel uh, called The Prog Corner. So I did. I jumped on it. And if you watch the early videos, I was still tagging it as part of the Fire Note. I still have a sub on the Fire Note called The Prog Corner. It's kind of hidden on mobile. It's like a drop-down screen you got to find. So it's really a hidden corner on the Fire Note. But, uh, yeah, I still do uh, my year-end list and stuff like that for the uh, website, but uh, once the channel started, all bets were off, man. You know, it's been 18 months now since we've been doing the Prog Corner, and uh, we just had 5,300 subscribers. It's awesome. I really didn't know what the ceiling was going to be for this channel. Uh, I, I wasn't sure at all, but uh, I think we're finding out, and it's a pretty high ceiling, and it's really, really exciting. But anyway, back to the giveaway. Um, yeah, I do want to give away some CDs that are just collecting dust, and uh, if anybody's interested, man, just hit me up. You... You know, my email is right there in the, in the uh, info section, in the about section. I'm real easy to get a hold of. If you want it, just let me know. Uh, I said the first three that asked, but let's face it, if anybody wants it, I'll probably end up sending it to them. Hey, and I'll even sign it, man. You'll get a signed copy. How cool is that? Signed copy of a CD from a defunct band nobody remembers. Outstanding. How can you say no to that kind of an offer? Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to kind of give a little brief synopsis of, you know, who I am and what I do and, uh, you know, why I do the prog corner. And uh, it's basically because I'm a failed musician uh, that tried his whole life to do something with music and it just never really happened. So uh, here we go. It's uh, pretty exciting for me that I, I think I finally found my niche. I think I finally found, you know, where I fit and, uh, you know, where I can actually put, uh, you know, some of my uh, talents, uh, you know, my entertaining skills, if you will, from years and years on stage, you know, entertaining people. But uh, here we're doing it a little bit differently and uh, I've actually got a bigger audience. So it's pretty Pretty exciting for me. I'm having a good time and I love you guys. You're a big reason why the Prague Corner is where it is today. Um, I couldn't have done it without you. So as a way of saying thank you, yeah, if you want my CD, you can have it. Anyway, uh, next week we got a lot of things going on. There's so many albums I want to review. I'm getting a backlog. I haven't reviewed the Ring Van Mobius yet. I haven't reviewed the Agusa yet. There's so many great records out there. And then we've got the... Uh, uh, Prague around the globe series. We still got to do Poland and Brazil and uh, the Eastern Europe. There's a whole bunch of uh, geographic places I want to go exploring with that. We've got the uh, Under the Influence series, looking at bands influenced by bigger bands. Uh, we've got all these different threads. I was doing my uh, uh, looking back at years. I 
I think I'm done from like 2022 back down to 2011. So 2010 is next in that. Uh, I've got my Under the Influence series. Uh, there's just so much. I, I don't even know, man. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, upon Further Review, I was doing some of those looking back at older records. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think I should be doing. But uh, anyway, I know you guys are going to be happy with whatever we do. And uh that's what we do in the prog corner. Anyway, like I said, I just wanted to do a, a quick little autobiographical uh, episode here today because it's been a while since I, I I ran without notes and just talked off the top of my head. And, uh, you know, whatever came out is what was going to come out. Anyway, I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East. Free Tibet. And God save the king. God save the king. Save that king. He deserves saving. Yes, he does, boys and girls. Yes, he does. I'll see you soon. Peace.